So I hope you have finished answering all the questions. That is all the 10 questions within this uh, 15 minutes. So let us see the answer or the solutions. So I have included uh, questions from difficulty level medium to simple in this uh, video. Okay. The first question is uh, from microcontroller and microprocessor session. The question is the stack pointer will be affected by instructions dash. There are actually four instructions given here which is push program status word to call address which can be any address then xthl that is exchange xthl is actually the instruction is xthl it is exchange top of stack with the register pair hl okay so there's a register pair hl and we'll be exchanging the top of the stack with this hl so that is xthl then rstn is restart okay so uh, these are the instructions and which of these instructions if we are executing will affect the stack point first one is push push instruction and pop instruction will anyway affect the stack pointer okay because whenever we are uh, pushing some data, we will be uh, storing the values or we will be incrementing the values of the stack pointer. We have to increase the stack. So we have to increase the stack pointer. So push is definitely getting affected. Then call instruction is also getting affected because when uh, call is happening, we have to actually save some data to the stack and we have to uh, fix the uh, address or we have to save the stack pointer also sometimes so call instruction is affecting the stack pointer and restart is also affecting all the registers mainly and also stack pointer but this xthl that is exchange the top of stack is actually just exchanging the contents present in the top of the stack with this hl register pair it has nothing to do with the stack pointer so it is just exchanging of registers and the data present in uh, in that happening okay so if there is a stack here the top of the stack is exchanged with the hl register pair okay so this is happening here and it is not affecting the stack pointer so the correct answer for this question which is the first question is one two and four okay Next question, a binary full adder has dash. I have only included the answer here. It's a theory question. The binary full adder can be realized with a two half, sorry, binary full subtractor has dash. Uh, answer is, it is uh, having two half subtractor and one OR gate or it can be realized, a full subtractor can be realized with a two half subtractor and one OR gate. Okay, correct answer is option B is the correct answer. The next question is, it's actually a logic function. Uh, you need to uh, find the simplified version of that logic function. The logic function is f of a, b, c, d is equal to a complement plus b, c into b plus c. D. This is a very simple question. You just have to expand the bracket. So multiplying this a complement with b, you'll be getting, I only included the answer. Okay. Uh, I'll tell you how to multiply it. a complement plus b, c. You can either uh, draw a bar or a complement sign. Okay, both are same. B plus C, D, which is equal to a complement B plus a complement C D plus B into B is same. So B C itself plus here there is B C, there is C D. C into C is C. So, it will be B, C and D. B, C, D. So, this is the answer for this question. Correct answer is option A, which is A complement B plus. You have to just rearrange, okay. Plus B, C plus A complement C, D plus B, C, D. Okay. The correct answer is option A is the correct answer. Next question. The minimum number of NAND gates to realize the function A plus A complement Sorry, A, B whole complement plus A, B complement C. Okay. So, uh, 
rather than just uh, that is whenever you are seeing such a function and you need to calculate the number of NAND gates required to realize the function uh, before going into thinking the number of NAND gates just think just uh, think of simplifying this expression if you could simplify it and then think for the number of NAND gates it is easy because there will be some trick in it okay so here in this expression the expression I'll write once again a plus a b whole expression is a plus a b whole complement plus a b complement c so here there is a middle term which is a b whole complement according to de morgan's law a b whole complement can be written as a complement plus b complement so you can replace this a b whole complement with a complement plus b complement right now there is a a plus a complement that is one one plus b complement plus a b complement into c 1 plus any term is equal to 1. So, this expression, if you simplify it, you are getting a simple one. You don't require a NAND gate to realize a 1. Because NAND gate uh, is actually not required because it is a 1 only. So, the number of NAND gates required is, correct answer is option A, which is 0. You don't require a NAND gate because the expression is actually 1. Okay, so that's why I am saying, whenever you are seeing such an expression, and you need to find the number of NAND gates to realize it. First, try to simplify the expression. That is, check whether it is possible to simplify the expression. If you could simplify it, then simplify and then look for the number of NAND gates. Okay. So, the correct answer for this question is option A, which is 0. The next question is from uh, number systems. The BCD number, that is the BCD representation for 874 to the base 10 that is the decimal number 874 is in BCD how can you represent it this is the correct answer I'm going to tell you how to write the BCD representation for 874 or any number okay BCD means the numbers represented in the form of four bit binary digits okay for example if you want to represent 3 in BCD 3 you know that in binary you can represent it as 1 1 right but if you are going for bcd it should be four binary bits so it is 0 0 1 1 bcd in bcd okay this is the bcd representation of 3 now if you want to represent 4 you know that the number is 100 0, 0. but since we are going for bcd it is 0 1 0 0 in bcd so this is how you need to represent any number or any digit as 4 bit binary number representation that is binary coded decimal or BCD representation. Now for 8 how to represent 8? Eight? 8 is actually 1 0 0 0 so there are 4 bits so no problem. Next 7 how you represent it? It is actually 1 1 1 but since it is BCD it is 0 1 1. Now, 4 we have already discussed. It is 0, 1, 0, 0. So, if you combine these three pairs, you will get the BCD for this number. That is 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0 in BCD. Okay. So, that is that's the correct answer here. 1, 0, 0, 0 here. Then 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, and 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. Okay, so that is the correct answer. So this is how you can convert uh, decimal numbers to BCD representation. And the correct answer for this question is option A. Next is a very simple question. question. It is a theory question. The rise time of a transistor is a time for the current to rise from dash to dash. It is a question. Okay, so while answering this question, we will discuss about the rise time and also fall time okay consider the current okay initially current will be low and then it rise to the peak and then it falls that is the case for a transistor that is a collector currents nature so the current will be initially low then it rises to a peak value then it falls okay then if this is this axis represents the current then this is the zero value this is the consider this is the 10 percentage of the maximum consider this is the 90 percentage of the maximum here also 
and 10 percentage here also okay now I'm going to join this to this axis this is nothing but time axis okay now we are going to discuss what is rise time so this point you can see it here this point is the point where current is having 10 percentage of its maximum value then in this point the current is having or is at its 90 percentage of the maximum value and this time is called rise time please note this down okay rise time is a time for the current to rise from or increase from 10 percentage to the 90 percentage of its peak value so the correct answer also i have noted here it is option c which is 10 percentage of the peak value to 90 percentage of the peak value whatever peak value it is it's 10 percentage to 90 percentage rise is happening during this rise time now what is fall time here you can see the current is is going to a peak value then it is decreasing so when it decreases from the 90 percent this point is the 90 percentage right 90 percentage to the 10 percentage that time we call it is fall time so this is rise time and fall time okay if the question is what is fall time you have to reverse it that is the current falls from 90 percentage to the 10 percentage that is called fall time anyway correct answer for this question is option c which is when current is rising from 10 percentage of peak to 90 percentage of peak we call it as rise time next question is uh, again a theory question the question is laser is based on principle of dash a stimulated emission b spontaneous emission c radiation d polarization the expansion of laser l a s e r is light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation now the answer is clear that it is based on the principle of stimulated emission correct answer is option a which is stimulated emission okay so the base uh, the basic advantage of actually using a laser is that uh, we will get more monochromatic uh, coherent light more pointed or coherent light and also it can be used for high speed and long distance application i have discussed about uh, various optical sources like la laser and led in the optical communication video so please have a look next question is from uh, cmr differential amplifier session if a differential amplifier has a gain of 20000 and cmrr is equal to 80 db its common mode gain is dash it is a simple question we know that the equation for finding cmrr is equal to differential gain ad by common mode gain ac right we have been given the value of cmrr but it is in db okay but if you see the gain it is given in a ratio so we need to convert cmrr in db to that of its corresponding number value it is in db so the equation is cmrr in db is actually that is the equation is equal to 20 log 10 that of its cmrr in ratio okay i'll put it as small cmrr okay here also i'll change it cmrr okay so we have been given this value that is cmrr and db we have been given it is 80 is equal to 20 log 10 of cmrr so i'll substitute it here that is 80 is equal to 20 log 10 cmrr so this is actually the ratio value and if you take the 20 log 10 of this ratio value we'll get the db value okay now 20 and 80 will be 4 then 10 uh, log sorry log 10 cmrr is 4 so cmrr is equal to 10 raised to 4 okay so this is the corresponding ratio value of cmrr for the 80 db cmrr 
that is if we convert from db to ratio we will get 10 raised to 4 and we have to substitute this value here okay i am going to remove all this i will put here 10 raised to 4 and also differential gain is given right it is nothing but 20,000 now it is very simple ac is Ten raised to twenty thousand by ten raised to four, so this is nothing but two. Okay, so the common mod gain is two is the common mod gain. Okay, so that is a ratio value. There is no unit. Okay, so the common mod gain is two. Correct answer is option A is the correct answer. The next question is from analog electronics. The voltage gain of an amplifier is hundred. A negative feedback with is applied uh, with beta that is feedback feedback factor is 0 0.03 overall gain is dash so overall gain or close loop gain ac is equal to a by 1 plus a beta here a is the open loop gain beta is the feedback factor here it is plus for negative feedback and minus for positive feedback okay so it will be 100 by 1 plus 100 into 0 0.03 it is 3 100 into 0 0.03 is 3 1 plus 3 is 4 so it is 100 by 4 that is 25 is the answer for the overall gain okay so the overall gain will be that is with the feedback or the closed loop gain will be 25 correct answer is option b is the correct answer moving on to the next question it is a series rlc circuit question a series RLC circuit has omega 0, 10 raised to 5. Q, quality factor is 50. Uh, resistance value is 400. What is C? The equation for find. So, in order to find the value of capacitance, we require the equation for quality factor Q is equal to. We can write it as omega 0 L by R or it is equal to 1 by omega 0 C into R. So, for this question, we need this equation here quality factor is 50 is equal to 1 by 10 raised to 5 into C into 400. Okay, so yeah, C is equal to 1 by 10 raised to 5 into 400 into 50. 4 5s are 20 10 raised to 5 you take to the numerator it is 10 raised to minus 5 okay I'll write it here you may not be able to see okay I'll write it above so the uh, the value we'll be getting is C is equal to 10 raised to 5 by 20,000, right? So, you can take this uh, 20,000, 1 by 2 into 10 raised to 4. So, it is 1 by 2 into 10 raised to 9. 1 by 2 is 0.5 into 10 raised to 9 5 into 10 raised to 9 that is you can write 0.5 into 10 raised to 9 as 500 into 10 raised to minus it is not 9 it is actually minus okay minus 9 okay because you are taking all these uh, tens to the numerator so it will be minus values sorry so please correct it 10 raised to minus 4 uh, 5 into minus 4 that is 10 raised to minus 9. 1 by 2 into 10 raised to minus 9. Or you can write it as 0.5 into 10 raised to minus 9. You can write it as 500 into 10 raised to minus 12 or 500 by cofarads. Okay. So that is the correct answer. The correct answer for this question is option C is the correct answer. The value of capacitance for the series RLC circuit is obtained as 500 by cofarad, which is option C is the correct answer. So these are the questions which we have included in this video. I really hope that these videos are making... Uh, really a good effect on you for those people who are preparing who is preparing for this technical assistant examination and if you found this uh, these videos useful please do share it uh, maximum and if you found it useful please do give it a thumbs up 
And if you want more videos, please do subscribe to the channel. And thanks for watching. Keep on watching.